This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Will hydrogen cars and trucks ever catch on? Honda certainly thinks so. It says it can double the durability and chop the cost of fuel cells by one-third compared to the one in the 2019 Honda Clarity. Once it achieves that, Honda wants to double the durability again and chop the cost in half. Then it will start selling fuel cell powered passenger cars and trucks, stationary power stations, and construction machinery. In 2024, it will launch a hydrogen powered version of the CRV in North America and Japan. It will test a heavy duty truck prototype with a Suzu in Japan sometime in the next year. And in China, Honda partnered with Dong Feng to test commercial fuel cell trucks. Even so, Honda plans to go slow. By the middle of the decade, it thinks it can sell 2,000 fuel cell modules and bump that up to 60,000 in 2030. Then it plans to sell a few hundred thousand units per year by the second half of the 2030s. There was a hugely symbolic event in Germany yesterday. Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, even showed up. ZF is teaming up with Wolfspeed, an American chip company, to take a closed down coal fired generating plant and convert it into a chip plant and R&D center. Wolfspeed makes silicon carbide chips that are used for power electronics and electric vehicles, as well as other industrial applications like wind generators. The plant is located in the Saarland, the traditional smokestack heart of Germany's industrial sector. ZF will buy several hundred million dollars worth of Wolfspeed stock that will give it part ownership of the new plant, which will make 200 millimeter chips. And ZF will integrate those chips into complete systems for automotive and industrial applications. Foreign automakers don't sell a lot of cars in Japan, so it's fascinating to see that Chinese automaker BYD is breaking into the Japanese market with electric vehicles. BYD will open 20 dealerships this year and wants 100 of them by 2025. It will start with three EVs this year, starting with the Addo 3, an SUV which costs just over $34,000. That will be followed by the Seal, a Model 3 size sedan that starts at $42,000 in China, and the Dolphin, which is priced at under 20 grand. Japanese automakers don't offer many electric cars, so BYD doesn't face a lot of competition. And if BYD is successful in selling EVs in Japan, It's a real threat to the entire Japanese auto industry. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. The next time you see an armored truck, you might not actually hear it. Loomis, one of the biggest transporters of cash and high-end items, announced it's expanding its fleet of electric armored trucks. It's buying another 150 trucks on top of the 20 it already had from U.S. supplier Exos, which makes heavy-duty electric commercial vehicles. The Class 6 armored trucks are built on Exos' own proprietary chassis and feature an e-axle that generates between 401 and 469 horsepower, as well as enough battery juice to travel between 130 and 240 miles, depending on the application. And we're guessing a big heavy armored truck is probably on the lower end of that scale. The expanded EV order is all part of Loomis's sustainability efforts and says it will start putting the new trucks into operation in the second half of this year. Is Nissan going away from boring EVs like the Leaf? It revealed a physical version of the Max Out concept, which was first shown in 2021 as a digital only rendering. It's a two-seat convertible that is designed to provide a dynamic driving experience. We like the simplicity of the arching body line and how the rectangular opening and lighting elements are picked up on the front and rear. Nissan says, quote, The Max Out concept displays its innovation to develop a diverse range of advanced and striking vehicles. We hope that translates to more exciting EVs. 
Elon Musk says LiDAR is not needed for self-driving vehicles, but he seems to be the only one who believes that. And here's yet another example of an automaker using LiDAR. Polestar is putting LiDAR units from Luminar into its Polestar 3 and 5 models. The Polestar 3 with LiDAR is available to order now, with deliveries expected in late 2024. And the Polestar 5, which is based on its Precept concept, will launch sometime next year. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. EVs lose a lot of range in cold weather, but the supplier company Gentherm developed a new climate control system that added 33% more range in cold temperatures to a retrofitted Chevrolet Bolt. It uses 70% less energy than the standard HVAC system that comes in the Bolt. Gentherm calls it Climate Sense, and what makes it so innovative is that it's based on an algorithm, not some new kind of heating system. It's all based on human physiology. Passengers use an app to enter their height, weight, sex, and age, and set the temperature that they want. And the algorithm calculates how to heat or cool their body. And it does not use a thermometer or sensors. It uses the car's existing HVAC elements, though Gentherm adds a neck scarf, which is a vent at the base of the headrest, and other elements for the passenger's feet. The system uses about 1 kilowatt to get passengers comfy, then drops to only 400 watts to maintain that. Autoline got a chance to test it in an Audi e-tron, and while the outside temperature was only 16 degrees Fahrenheit and the cabin temperature was only 40 degrees, we felt perfectly warm and comfortable. That's negative 9 degrees and 4 degrees Celsius. Climate Sense will debut on the Cadillac Celestic, and will undoubtedly spread to a lot of other electric vehicles. Tesla kicked off a price war that could financially cripple everyone else that's selling EVs. We're calling it an EV Armageddon. And that's the topic on Autoline After Hours today. Some automakers say they can ignore what Tesla is doing and will follow a business-as-usual model. But can they? Charlie Chesbro, the senior economist at Cox Automotive, and Joe White from Reuters will be on the show with their insights and analysis. And we invite you to join John and Gary when the show goes live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time today. But that's a wrap for this episode. Thanks for joining us. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.